Hey everybody, this is John from Code Planet with our very first of what I hope will be a lot, very many uh, videos for you. Uh, today we're going to be taking a quick look at HappyJS, which is a node-based web framework that I'm pretty fond of. Uh, I'm going to try to do a series here on Happy, so today is just going to be like getting a very basic server running and getting your first endpoint created. And it's going to be pretty similar to their docs, but I just thought some people might appreciate it in video form. Um, so here's the website right here, happyjs.com. And we're just going to start off and build a really basic server. So I'm going to move into my terminal here. I'm going to go into this folder where I keep all my web projects. And I'm just going to make a new directory. Make that a little bit bigger so everybody can see. Uh, and we'll call it happy project. And then I'm going to cd into that directory. Uh, okay, so I've got this em empty directory here. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do an npm init. Uh, for those that haven't done that before, that's using Node's Package Manager to just initialize an empty project. Uh, and basically what it's going to do is it's going to generate a package.json for you. Uh, and so we'll cover that in a second here. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter through all these, like what the project name is, what version, description, uh, entry point. But if you were making you know, a project that was going to go to production, you would want to you know, fill this stuff in uh, with pertinent information. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it blank. And then it's going to ask me, is that okay for this package.json? And I will say yes. Uh, so now if I look in the directory, there's only one file, package.json. And if I open it up, we can just see that it's got, you know, basically I just hit enter, but it's got a project name, a version number, a spot for a description, things like that. Um, and the important thing here is that we need one of these because what we're going to do next is we're going to install happy, uh, which is a dependency of our project, and we need to save it in, in this package.json. So if anybody else pulls it down, you know, they'll be able to get uh, happy installed too. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do npm install happy and I'm going to throw this dash dash save flag. So that's going to go out and it's going to fetch the package, it's going to install it on my system and when we're done here if I reopen package.json now I'll see on line 12 that we've got this happy dependency. So that's what we want. So now if somebody else takes this project down all they have to do is run npm install and it'll install all the things they need. Uh, Alright cool. So now we've got our node modules folder, which npm automatically creates. That's where the happy project lives. We've got our package.json. And so now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're just going to build our a little initial file. I'm going to call it index.js. All right. So the very first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to require this happy module that we just downloaded. So I'm going to do var happy equals, and I'm just going to require happy right here. Um, and so that's just really common node syntax whenever you do an npm install of something, you then need to require it uh, so you can use it later. Uh, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new server. So happy has this function just called dot server that we can use. So I can do something like, you know, var server equals a new happy instance dot server, something like that. And so now this server can do all sorts of cool things. So like one thing we can do is we can specify the connection information, like that we're doing a local project and what port we want Happy to run on. So we can do server.connection, and then this just takes an object into it here. And so what the object can take is something like host, and we can call it localhost, and then something like port, and then we can put it at 1337, something like that, right? Uh, server can also do all of our routing for us. So routing is like creation of different endpoints if you have like slash about or slash uh, blog or slash anything like that. Uh, and so we can do a server dot route and this also takes an object. And with server dot route we can do like what method. Uh, for those that haven't done that before these are HTTP verbs. So you can use like get, post, update, delete, these kind of things. And um, you know, if we had like a method that we were trying to make where a user would save some information, we would make it a post method because the user's posting that data to our server. But if they're just going to hit it with their web browser, then we want to go ahead and make a get method because they're just trying to get information from us. Uh, and then it also takes what path we'd like. Uh, so we can do this one out of their example, actually. Kind of like it's really simple. We'll just do a slash hello path. Uh, and then also we've got what the actual handler is. So when that method and that path both get hit, what do we actually want to do? And that takes a function. And so this is like very similar to a lot of other node libraries. It returns this request and reply. And so you can do different things with the request and reply variables. And so for this very simple example, uh, all we'll do is we'll reply uh, and we'll reply the string, hello world. Just real, real basic here. Okay, so we've got our connection set up. We've got our route down here. 
And then really the only other thing we need is we need to actually start up this server. Uh, and so again, server has, oops, server has this really nice method called start. It also takes a function. And inside this function, you can leave it blank, honestly, you could just do server start. Uh, but I always like, I think it's common practice to have a little console log message that lets the users know that the app is up and running and everything's working correctly. Um, and so according to their docs, they do this little you know server running at, and then they also pass in server info.uri. So I can see what port and what uh, host the server is running at. Uh, so let's see if we got this going well so far. I'm going to save this file, this index.js. We've got our package JSON that we created, the node modules folder, and index.js. And then I'm just going to run node dot on the project. All right, so we've got a little problem here. Unexpected identifier with path. So let me open this up again, and let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. Uh, server dot route method get. Oh, there it is. Okay, so here on line 11, we can see that I forgot a comma here. Let's try it again, node dot. All right, <laughs> it looks like I see server not defined. It's a little typo on my part. Let's go back down to 19. Uh, find this server.info, that's better, there we go. Okay, typos aside, it looks like we got our server up and running on port 1337. And so now what you can do is you can just copy this localhost 1337. You can open up a new tab, hit it like that, and you will see an error here, 404 not found. The reason we're seeing that is because we haven't defined a route for just a slash, right? We define slash hello, but we don't have our main route set up yet. We'll do that in another video. But for now, we can go to 1337 slash hello, and we see hello world. Uh, so hopefully that was good enough to get you started on it. Uh, expect a lot more happy videos coming, and leave anything you'd like to see in the comments. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.